Where we're going to head to next is not the question of like, well, now you've got all these derivatives, how do they relate to each other? But what if you want to climb out of, like I want to know more than just how things are changing, I want to know what things are at particular points in time, okay? So that would be a little bit like translating from, okay, well, how quickly am I moving around this circle to thinking about, well, where am I on the circle at given points, okay? And in order to climb back out of derivatives, we know that integration is the calculus tool that we use for that, okay? So, I hope I've stalled enough for you. When you have a look at question one, you'll see how this requires us to use integration. Here's the scenario, read with me. Water is flowing out of a tank at the rate of dv on dt equals 5, 2t minus 50. Pause. Take a seat. Let's think about what's going on here, right? In fact, maybe you want to even draw um, a little diagram. If you have, A tank of water, right? I've got to put some water in. There you go. Water is flowing out of this tank, and they give us an equation that defines dv on dt. So that's how the volume is changing over time. So this is the flow rate out of the tank. Okay? They're giving us this. That's how volume is uh, is changing over time. Okay. So when you have a look at this, for instance, and we'll actually get into this in a second, at a time like, say, time zero, right, at the beginning, what's this going to be equal to? Have a look at it. Um, the 2t is going to become zero. So you've got 5 times negative 50. So 5 times negative 50 is negative 250. So this thing is the volume. Sorry, that's a bit of a dodgy V. The volume is getting smaller at the first instance at negative 250, what units are they? Uh, it's in liters. liters per minute. Liters per minute, okay? So this is, I'm gonna put that in brackets over here. Liters per minute, okay? So this is coming up, but you can see this is going to change, right? For example, at a certain point, and I'm not going to say it just yet because this is gonna be one of the questions. At a certain point, this expression will be zero. Do you notice that? That means that the volume is no longer changing. So the water, it starts coming out at this amount of liters per minute, but it seems to be slowing down and eventually it stops. So you've got a picture in your head for how a quantity is changing and the rate at which it changes is also changing. So it's not like that, um, that point that was moving around at a constant speed the whole time. Water's coming out, but it's slowing down as it progresses, okay? So this is the scenario, and again, we're dealing with liters per minute. Here's part A, this is the question I refuse to answer. When does the water stop flowing? So my advice for all of these questions, I mean, I've been saying this from the beginning, even when we weren't in this topic, is please use words, please use words, explain what's going on, don't just have a series of disconnected equations. So I'm literally going to say, the water stops flowing. When, now, what does it mean for the water to stop flowing? Well, that means, what can we say about the volume at that time? Now, interestingly, I don't have an expression for volume at the moment. I will get one shortly, uh, but I don't have an expression for the volume. But I do have an expression for how the volume is changing, okay? And we sort of assume, well, of course the water will stop flowing when the container is empty, but maybe the water stops flowing before then, I don't actually know that yet, okay? So this, when it says stops flowing, doesn't actually tell me about volume. It tells me about how the volume is changing. In other words, it's not changing anymore because it's not flowing anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've kind of like gone to another step and say, oh, well, volume zero, sure, it'll be empty, but maybe not. I mean, <laughs> this is a bit of a dodgy diagram, but have a look at this, right? Look at where this spout is. The volume will still have, there will still be something in there on my diagram once the water stops flowing, because look, no, no more will get out, right? So it's not hard to think of a scenario where the water will stop flowing before the volume is zero. So don't assume that that's the condition. All I know is that dv on dt, so I'm going to say that. Okay, at this point, the volume of water stops changing, and that's what water flowing would mean, okay? So now I can go ahead and solve this. In other words, five times this, 
equals zero. And don't skip on that step. Don't, don't go ahead and even take out a factor of five. I know it's easy to do, but we want to say that I understand what dv under here is, and I'm going to go straight to the direct substitution. From there, I think it is trivial now. I can actually just read off what value of t will make that zero. Good. And don't forget, we've been solving this for like all these letters and that kind of thing. But the question itself says, like the question doesn't say solve for t when dv under t equals zero. The question says, when does the water stop flowing? Mm. So at this point, I'm going to say, therefore, after, like the water stops flowing when, uh, after 25 minutes, I bring my units in. Okay. So again, don't, don't skimp on the words. The words are what is communicating your understanding of the question. 